Welcome, my beautiful Cancers. Uh, this is your September 2024 reading. Um, this is going to be for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising. You know, I'm right on the cusp with my moon of Gemini and Cancer, and I feel like I can relate to both. So, you know, I say my fellow uh, Cancer moons also. Um, oh, I got lotion under my nails. Um, also for... Those intuitively guided, thank you for paying attention to your intuition. I really appreciate it. So do your spirit guides. Um, some of you are here because you're in love with the cancer, platonically, romantically. And just understand your guides know that. And they're going to, I feel like your guides will use any means possible to get a message to you. Um, they could be sending you messages, messages, but you're just not sure. So... I'm definitely an open vessel for them to bring the messages here. Um, we are doing something a little different this month, which probably many of you already know. Instead of going in order for the monthlies, like I started the birthday month, which I did Virgo, and then normally I'd go in line like Libra, Scorpio. Uh, I was in, I was guided to do opposite, opposite signs this month. So um, yours is Capricorn. And theirs is already done. So, you know, I would definitely check it out. I can definitely see the synchronicities uh, since I've been doing these. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to do the same thing next month. I just, you know, I in another way of looking at it, your opposite sign, like I'm a Virgo sun and Pisces is my opposite. So where they have like, you know, a lot of, you know, their emotions, they can share them easily. Virgo, not so much. So I can definitely learn a lot from Pisces and Pisces from Virgo. So that's why um, I feel doing the opposite signs is so important. Um, also, I've been getting a lot of questions. Should I watch my sun, my moon, or my rising? In what order? I feel like it doesn't matter what order, but just understand like each one means something different. You know, your son, I feel like is really like what you show to the universe. It's like the makeup, the outfit you choose, um, where your moon and rising are, are much deeper. You know, it's the inner parts of you. So, um, and you do need to know your birth time to get your rising. I don't, I don't know my birth time and there's no one left alive <laughs> who can give me that. And I did order a birth certificate, but it wasn't on it. So, um, but I do think it's Scorpio. I don't know why I just do. Um, but anyway, so your, your sun and your moon, you can calculate even your rising. If you know the birth time, you can, there, you can use like a free, um, calculator online. So, you know, all that. And I think it's good to know that again, I'm a Virgo sun. I have a Gemini moon, but so close to cancer really on the cusp that um i thank god for the for my moon sign because otherwise i could probably be too rigid i could probably be someone who ever thinks too much that type of thing you know i feel like the virgo part of me is why the readings are long i like details i want to go into detail for you i want to bring you real solutions and again i do read through my spirit guides who connect to your guides so that's why often i'll say a reading will reach you in divine timing. You know, I have people all the time say, I just watched a reading. And then after the reading, I realized it was a year old, but it was everything I needed to know right at that moment. To me, that's what divine timing is all about. Um, so don't even worry about that. Anyways, um, I'm also using the same decks that I use for Capricorn. So every opposite sign I'm using the same decks so that I really can see those synchronicities for you. And I will point them out. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get into the reading. Something else I'm doing for September is I'm bringing back the major arcanas. And I'm really using these as like bullet points. Um, I'm shooting for like three or four cards. We'll see what comes out. And sometimes they're their own little message. So we're going to use them. And I love using them in a reading, and I, and I think I'm going to try to do it more often. I don't know why I haven't. We, of course, are going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. 
we are going to use the Gilded Tarot to clarify or go deeper. And for your main spread, a deck I really love for you is the Light Seers. It's not normally a deck I'd pick for Capricorn, but it was really calling to me. And maybe it was calling to me because it's a deck I love for you. Um, so we are going to use the Light Seers for your main spread. But let's go ahead and open this reading. And I am going to start with Mother Mary. I'm going to bring the lid down a little bit. There we go. Everything is always pre-shuffled. But I like to give it a shuffle or two with you here. Definitely feel um, comfortable asking your spirit guides to give you like signs of confirmation through this reading or any reading you watch. You know, if you know that someone connects spiritually. Well, I guess they don't even have to connect spiritually, but your spirit guides will let you know. Um, and it can be, you know, you may get like angel bumps. I may say a word, um, a number, a name, you know, um, a song. A lot of times I break out in song and I really don't mean to. It just happens. And I've learned that many times when I do that, it, the song, you relate to that song. So that's why I do it. Not because I'm a great singer. I already know that I'm not. Um, but that doesn't stop me from singing. All right. So let's just go ahead and take a moment. Just calm our energy. Another thing I recommend you do before you watch any reading is just calm your energy. Bring yourself to the present moment. And then just go with the flow. And let's begin. I give them a cut. All right. Cancer. You know, someone asked me yesterday, no, Friday, if um, when Cancer's was going to, Cancer's reading was going to be out. And I said yesterday, but I totally forgot. I mean, I didn't forget. It was my boyfriend's birthday. Um, but I wanted to take the day off. So for those who are waiting, I do apologize. All right. We have home. Home is where the heart is. Home. I trust and follow my divine guidance about my home. Okay. So we'll see how this relates back to the reading. And they always do. And um, I've been pulling a Mother Mary card after the reading also. So if, you know, if I feel that, then we'll definitely do that again. Now let's bring in the Major Arcanas. Just going to give them a little shuffle. There's not many of them, so it doesn't take much to shuffle them. All right, let's give them a cut. And let's officially open up this reading. The beautiful sun. Hmm. Um, this is the ruler of Leo. Though I have to tell you, as the major arcanas, I'm not really reading them as people, but I will mention it. This is the illuminator. You know, the sun to me is, um, it just feels like the promise of a brand new day, like playfulness, joy, laughter. So it may be coming after a period of like, you know, it makes me think of like, you know, I've just gotten through the dark, cold winter and the sun is like that first sunny day in the spring. So the sun it's ever done in the dark will come to the light when the sun is out also. Interesting that there's these two children and they look like they're mirroring each other. It's almost like they're twins. So that may ring a bell with some of you. Whoa. Justice. Card Libra. Justice is about balance. 
you know, the balancing of the scales, what's fair and just in your world. Um, it can certainly talk about, you know, cutting of ties, but whatever ties I'm cutting with justice, what it's really doing is rebalancing you. It's bringing balance back into your life. I can certainly talk about karmic energy also. You know, um, some read it as a divorce, but I don't like to really read it that way. I just say cutting it to eyes, you know, for whatever is not serving you. You know, when justice shows up in a reading, really what it's about is making you whole again. So if you've been feeling like unbalanced, let's say, especially with the sun right before it, then this may be a period of time. And, you know, all of a sudden I remembered we had like, I think, seven planets in retrograde. And I know last week and this week, like a lot of people have been going through like a lot of stress. So I have a feeling it has a little bit to do with that. We have, hello, Destiny, the wheel. And you know what I noticed with this image is this person who's spinning the wheel, she's blindfolded. It's like blind faith. Interesting, I named someone's reading that, blind faith. I wonder if it was Capricorn. I can't remember. Um, but this speaks about your destiny. And because it's mirroring the sun, I feel like, you know, let's say I've been at the bottom of the wheel. Well, now I feel like I'm going to the top. May talk about just trusting in destiny, you know. And destiny is not just about the good things in our lives. It sometimes is those hard lessons. But I feel like this is the overcoming of that. All right. So, we have the sun, justice, the wheel. You know, I'm noticing justice has her sword up. So, for some of you, it does feel like potentially you cut some ties. But I also want to say that the scales are balanced. You know, I feel like sometimes... Um, Let's just say that justice is talking about anything karmic, like a karmic lesson. And I realize that and I learned that karmic lesson, even if it's a karmic person. Um, and I do make that final cut. It, you know, I feel like it just automatically balances you. And then the wheel following that, it feels like, OK, on to the next, on to the next. But again, the sun is like, tells me that there's nothing to fear here. You know, nothing to fear. All right. Did I shuffle these? I'm doing your reading in the evening, by the way. Um, and the reason why I say that is I feel like when I read in the evening, it's like a whole different vibe. I really love reading in the evening, but... You know, I don't always get that opportunity. All right, let me go ahead and... I'm going to grab a drink real quick. Okay, and let's begin. <clears throat> We have the moon, card of Pisces, but it is your ruler. Interesting, we have the sun and the moon. We have the seven of cups. That's also your energy. You know, seven of cups is about making a decision, choosing a cup. But it can be during chaotic energy, you know. Interesting how I said I feel like there's seven planets in retrograde. And this is a number seven. You know, and it's almost like I feel like a little bit of like the hangman should come out because maybe I don't want to make a serious decision while certain planets are in retrograde, like Mercury being in retrograde. Um, but 
nonetheless, this is about choosing a cup. The moon is next to it. The moon can talk about uncertainties. So, you know, normally I would say that it's okay. Like you should trust yourself in choosing this cup. But I, but I understand why there might be like a little confusion. Um, this can happen during chaotic energy. Again, seven planets in retrograde. The moon, a little bit of uncertainty. Right? Like, I feel like, well, I've chosen cups before. And they haven't all worked out for me. We have the Queen of Wands. Um, can be a Leo, um, Sagittarius, or Aries. But just look at her image. You know, I give you the signs and then I just read the energy and I forget about the sign. And it's really what I try to get you to do also, because I feel like when you're, you know, watching Tarot, um, what you want to remember is that we are a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? We're all connected. So this person looks like they're rising above the drama, rising above some type of drama. Queen of Wands is someone who is action-oriented. And she is like pointing her hand right to those seven cups. I feel like she's saying to you, follow your passion. Follow your passion. Whatever, whatever cup you decide, make sure you're passionate about it. And then be willing to take action. And the moon can just represent... You know, not projecting yourself too far out in the future. You know, let's just choose a cup and let's see where it goes. She follows her passions, her desires. But she's pointing right back at that seven of cups. So if it's speaking about any, like, chaotic energy, I feel like just rise above it. If you can. We have the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. You know, Six of Pentacles is a very compassionate, empathetic energy. It's the energy where um, I really do want to help others. You know what I mean? I want to help others do better, be better, but I can't help everyone. This is the energy of learning that fine art of give and take. You know, often you'll see this can't really see it in this card, but you'll see it's a little unbalanced. Like maybe I've been giving and giving and not receiving. And that could speak of your past. And that may be why it may be hard to choose a cup. Though again, the sun will help illuminate that. Let's bring these up a little bit. Excuse me. You know, it's interesting because the person in the moon's energy looks like, you know, she looks like she's sinking underwater. Some of you may have had that feeling like, oh, I just feel like, you know, like I'm drowning in this injustice world. But yet, she does see this. She sees the light from the moon. Like that light is reaching her. And then the sun is right above that. Look at that. All these cards want to come out. And we're going to take them. Okay, but let's take them in the order they came. Um, base up first. We have the Five of Pentacles. Hmm. Five of Pentacles. Well. You know, the Five of Pentacles, first of all, it's a five, and a five does speak about change. But in the Five of Pentacles, it may not be change that I asked for. You know, if you just look at this image, this person's head is down. It looks like she's in a state of sadness. 
you know, makes sense coming under the moon where there's somewhat, un you know, a little bit of uncertainty. I feel like in the Five of Pentacles, it's almost like a tower moment happened. But it's not the end. Maybe the end of a situation, but it's not the end of your blessings. And I say that because if she just, you know, once she moves out of this energy, again, five. So I'm no longer going to focus on that. There's this big old key. And this key unlocks this next door. And the wheel is like, I'm ready for you to spin me. Let's go on this adventure. Queen of Wands, that's exactly what she would say. You know, maybe I've been in the energy of, again, you know, like tower moments type of energy. But it feels like things are about to change. And you do have a part to play here. And that part is picking yourself up, turning around, noticing that key, and unlocking this next door. For a lot of you, it could signify that certain chapters are ending. But listen, with the wheel here, maybe it was just meant to happen. And I know not everybody loves to hear that. Like, what do you mean? Like, maybe I gave someone a lot of my time, and now you're telling me it's over? Well, because we have the Six of Pentacles here also, potentially, but maybe it was, maybe it's meant to be over at this point. You know, change is hard, but it doesn't have to be. But I feel like if we just recognize that our whole life, we're going to go through these different chapters where doors are going to be closed, new doors are going to be opened. And it's kind of up to us through our free will, how quickly we open up the, the new door, how quickly we close that old door. And then look at this, the Ace of Cups. Now, it's following the Five of Pentacles, and to me, that's good news. So, I feel like whatever happened in the Five of Pentacles that put you in let's just say a state of sadness or a state of like, what do I do next type of energy? Uh, especially if it's relating to any, well, you know, I want to say any type of love, but it could also be like a love of what you do. This is after the fact. This is after the change. Hmm, Seven of Swords. Interesting. Eight of Swords, Cancer. Ay, 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 ay. Now, I have to say, like I'm saying, ay, ay, ay. However, I can see why a door needed to close. Why, or let me put it a different way. Why it would serve you to either close this door or accept the closing of a door. Because the Seven of Swords, you know, it's called the thief in the night. I feel like it's a little liar. It's someone who lies a lot and really has no problem lying. And this Seven of Swords moves directly into the Eight of Swords. And this is a self-created prison. And the only person who can uncreate it is you. It is an eight. So it is about a new beginning. You know, it's interesting because we have change mirroring a new beginning. Both of them somewhat difficult energies, but both of them you have control over. You have power over that. You know, I love this image because it's like your higher self trying to talk to your human self. Like, look what you're doing. You know, you're wearing this blindfold. Maybe you didn't want to face that someone you were connected to carries this energy. You know, this is someone who takes more than they need. More than they're supposed to. And it's like he is interesting. It's almost like this crow. 
is trying to tell you that. To me, it, it almost feels like like a red flag. You know, it's like your guides were like trying to tell you that there, you could have been connected to someone or a situation where, you know, I just don't feel like the truth is being told. And, you know, the name, the, the, the energy of this is deception and envy. Deception and envy. And with justice here, now I get why we want to cut ties. And it feels to me like that's part of the problem of the Seven of Cups. You know, some of you may have like this new opportunity or someone new coming into your life. Even if someone, somebody, it can be somebody old, but a new opportunity to love again, let's say. But there seems to be fear around that. And it does seem to tell us like the story of where, you know, and this, this is your compassionate heart where you are a giver. You know what I mean? But are you receiving? In the Seven of Swords, you're not receiving. This person's taking. And they're taking more than their fair share. And, they're, you know, I feel like the person in the Seven of Swords is only concerned about themselves. Me, me, me. But yet it's got you tied up in knots. It has you over here in, you know, almost like a state of sorrow. But, just like I said, where if she picks up that key and unlocks that next door, the Ace of Cups is what lies behind that next door. And then we have the Six of Cups. Interesting how I said, um, could be new love, right? But this could also be someone that you know. This could be someone you've known from your childhood, you know, and then it ties me back to the sun where I feel like it's like two children who are mirroring each other, you know, potentially twins. So could certainly tie back to someone you've known, you know, but this would be someone that you have happy memories about. Coming under that five of pentacles, under the moon. But the sun is illuminating it. So again, in a way, that's a sense of comfort. Because when the sun comes out, anything again that's done in the dark, it will come to the light. You can feel it. Especially if you dealt with people like in the Seven of Swords energy, that they're all about themselves. You know, and... You may have like tried to, I don't know, maybe I wanted to change them. I wanted to help them, right? With your compassionate heart. But it feels like it was just you giving, them taking. You know, the two sevens are connecting to each other, right? Deception and envy. But then, you know, then there's this door that closes. And again, I may not have asked for that door to close, but in the same breath, you know, I feel like this is the type of energy where, you know, one day you will look back and you will be thankful because it just doesn't feel like the same. You know, this is a very happy energy, the Six of Cups, treasured memories. Interesting. Okay, well, let's keep going. Um, you have a nice mix of energy on the board. Three swords. Dang it. You say dang it, but you know what? Now it's mirroring justice. And it's coming under the Ace of Cups. And I feel like what it's saying is it wants you to realize how, let's just say past heartache, because this is of the past. You could certainly still be going through it, but I feel like this Ace of Cups has nothing to do with 
this deception and envy. Because I feel like the five of pentacles would have came after it, but it didn't. There's a door, right? And once that door is unlocked, once I walk through that door, the ace of cups lies on the other side of it. This is mirroring justice and the seven of cups. So in a way, it's kind of showing you how, let's just say, past energy is affecting your current choices. Hmm. Queen of Wands, though, rising above it all, knowing that that wheel's going to spin again. You know, whatever ties have been cut through justice, they do serve you. And sometimes you don't know it right away. Some of you could certainly represent like a karmic type of relationship. And, you know, it's interesting because... If you just think back in your life at different relationships where I know I can say this anyway, where like I've been in previous relationships and they come to an end. Some I didn't ask for it to come to an end and it's heartbreaking. Right. But then as time moves along, someone new comes in, you fall back in love. And sometimes you're able to look back and say, thank God that that came to an end. Because otherwise, I wouldn't be able to appreciate this Ace of Cups. You know, yes, there are people who are going to break our heart, but there's also people that are not going to break our heart. I know that from experience. We have the Chariot, your Major Arcana. So now you are mirroring this Queen of Wands. So if you had any doubt that it was you, now you know. You know, it's definitely telling us that, um, well, I don't know. I just get this feeling like someone took advantage of you. Someone took advantage of your kind heart, your empathetic heart. And, you know, you naturally want to give, but you also need to learn how to be open to receiving. And you're not going to find that in the Seven of Swords, you know, no matter how much you try. Eight of Swords, putting walls up, trying to protect myself. You know, it's almost like in this Five of Pentacles where our head is down. I merely need to lift my head up. I really need to look. And the sun is going to illuminate everything for you. You know, this seven of swords, this is not so, I'm not telling you like, oh, by the way, someone is cheating on you. This is something you would already know. Because you're the one who created these walls. And these walls, you know, it's our human mind who creates these walls. We think we're protecting ourselves. But our spiritual self would be like, no, my dear. That's what your intuition is for. Your intuition will let you know. You know, because I do feel like, where's that crow? Right there in the Seven of Swords. I feel like that crow, it's like screaming, I'm a red flag, I'm a red flag. But then as humans, and we've all done it, we've ignored those red flags. And unfortunately, it feels like it, re it resulted in heartache. Maybe more than once. The chariot is really about unlimited potential. But it's also about balance. You know, I feel like the chariot is unlimited potential because I now understand energy better. Somebody taught me some hard lessons. Listen to that little birdie outside the window. I don't know if you can hear that. 
He's like sitting right on the ledge of my window. I hope you can hear that. I feel like for some of you, it's your spirit guides. You know, I also want to remind you when the chariot shows up, what it really speaks about is it's your intentions that move this chariot. You know, it's not magic. Like you tell the chariot where to go, your beliefs. Seven of Swords above that, I have a feeling, you know, it's like the chariot coming in with four flat tires. It's not going to go far. But maybe once I, you know, and, and Justice can talk about like, like cutting emotional ties. Doesn't always have to mean like I'm literally cutting ties with someone. You know, maybe that's already happened, but now emotionally, I'm not going to allow it to hold power over me. You know, when you uncreate this pri this prison, it's freedom. It's true freedom. And it's a new beginning. Okay, let's keep going. We have... Okay, well, we have another card to flip over, so we're going to take it. Okay, so first we have the Page of Wands. Page The Page of Wands, just look what she's doing. It's like she's throwing her wand out into the universe. And wherever it lands is where I'm going to go. This is like saying, I'm ready for some adventures. I'm ready for a new adventure. It must mean that some of you have set yourself free from the Eight of, eight of Swords. That self-created prison. Some of you realize that, you know, I do have a tendency to give and give. And, of course, I had hoped and wished that I could receive equally. But something was off balance there. You know, this this is what I call my risk taker. And it makes sense with the Queen of Wands here. Because, again, she's action-oriented. She follows, you know, what where her passions lie. She is ready to choose a cup. And to me, I feel like she must have uncreated this prison. She must have unlocked this next door. This is about adventure. You know, our souls came into this lifetime to have adventures. And sometimes we kind of get locked up in this one situation with one certain person. And then, let's say, like, you know, in the Seven of Swords, it can even mean someone who, like, has you on the hook. Like, they contact you, and then you don't hear from them. And just when you're ready to move on, they contact you again. And I feel like that's where... Your own energy comes in. That's where you just have to like make a decision. Like I can't keep doing this. I can't keep going back. I can't keep playing this game. So, you know, to, to me, the page of wands is someone who's taken chances in life and they didn't all pay off. But it doesn't stop her or him from taking another one. Now, it's mirroring the Six of Cups. And then along with that, so here she is throwing that wand, right? And it's landing in the Three of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles, first of all, is very creative type of energy. And I often feel like if, if my heart is broken, one of the things I can do to like just help ease it is take my mind off it is to get into my creative my creative self. Now, as this relates to love, let's say, well, it doesn't even have to relate to love. It's really a message about your individuality. You know, um, it doesn't mean you're perfect because nobody's perfect, but it does mean you are who you're meant to be. And also, to me, because the will is here, you know, I think we have to realize that 
you know, destiny, it's not a just it's not just about like the beautiful things that's happened. Many times it's about the lessons to get us to the beautiful things so that we can truly appreciate them. This is where at least one other person, if not more, are appreciating your individuality. You know, there's nothing you need to change about yourself. That's what I feel like they would say to you. Sometimes just putting your head down. You know, like, let's just say I'm having a bad day. Um, That's what I do. I, I get into my creativity. You know, that guitar that came to me, like, you know, from, I feel like, heaven itself. I'm learning how to play it. I used to love to paint. I haven't painted in a long time. But anyways, I feel like this is this is a way to help you better cope with, let's just say, the things that have happened, you know, outside of your control. Excuse me. Hmm. I also think some of you may be in the process of, or you may be thinking about making a move. And, you know, I just have to say, with the sun here and the six of cups, I often feel that as like moving back home, you know, or moving to a place where I do have happy memories. Now, if it's not a physical move, it can just mean energetically. You know, I am using the scales of justice and I'm cutting the things that just are not fair and just in my world. You have a right to think about yourself. Right? And then again, this person spilling, um, getting ready to spin that wheel, but with blind faith. That's kind of what the Page of Wands is doing also. Like, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance on myself. Maybe I'm going to take a chance within my creativity. You know, and I often feel for those periods of time when we're alone, at least for me, I guess not for everyone, but I feel like a lot of times we we're, we receive like epiphanies and ideas. You know, we're guided towards certain things and if we just follow those, those those breadcrumbs, next thing you know, it's like you have this whole new interest in something. You know, um, like, you know, when my spirituality just started opening up, um, I kept going to the library and I kept getting books and I kept reading and I couldn't get enough. Like, I'm telling you, I was taking five to ten books out a night. I was taking out more than than legally allowed, but because I came from a small town, they allowed me, you know what I mean? But I would like read them within, you know, that night or within a couple nights, I'd have all those books read and then I'd go back and I'd get more. Something piqued my interest and then I followed it. And I have to tell you, that's what brought me to doing what I'm doing today. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Ten of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles under that. Page of Pentacles speaks about a learning experience. You know, what am I learning, you know, through life? For some of you, you can talk about, you know, something you went to school with or what you went to school for. I feel like I want to go one more. Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands, is, if you just look at her clothes, like she's busting out of these clothes, that's because she's reflected back at least the last chapter. And she's really looking at how much she has grown. Look how that wand is illuminated. And then you have the Page of Wands here. You know, nines are about reflection, but final reflection. And I feel like what you have learned from that, how you have grown, 
And then the Ten of Pentacles. You know, some of you could be changing, like, households. It's interesting because there are a lot of difficult cards here, or energies, let's say. But truth be told, when the sun is out and then destiny is mirroring it, I feel like what it's saying is what was is not what will be. It will be better. But you do have to spin that wheel. You do have to have blind faith. You know, you have to appreciate who you are and who you've become. You know, another thing I don't think I could do is read Tarot without understanding how my own experiences play a big part in it. You know, I often feel like some of the best spiritual teachers are those who have truly been through it themselves. And I've been through all this. I have been through all this. Interesting, because some of you, I feel like you may be moving like back I, and I want to say back home you know maybe you've gone through a divorce and you just found yourself like ah oh, what am I going to do now and you move back home and it may just be you know a divine move you just don't know it at that time you know the five of pentacles mirroring the eight of swords that's difficult energy but we just don't want to get stuck in that energy because, again, we want to remember that this, this Eight of Swords is about setting yourself free. And it truly does feel like freedom. It definitely takes the power away from that Seven of Swords. You know, it's funny because in a lot of the readings this month, I've been getting where it feels like there's new love coming in for a lot of people. Um, and I did predict way back in January that this was a year a lot of soulmates were going to connect. Um, and here your reading feels like, you know, it can certainly talk about new love. But I definitely feel for some of you, this can talk about someone you already know. But someone when you think about them, you know, makes you smile a little. Brings a little contentment to your heart. It definitely feels like there's someone who is going to love you for exactly who you are. You know, even understand your plight. They've probably been there themselves. And that's the thing about soulmates. A lot of times, it's funny I'm talking about soulmates and we don't even have the soulmates on the table. Um, but I kind of feel like they're going to, they're going to show. Um, and I may be reading that through the sun's energy also. But that's what I find with a lot of soulmates, you know, and I find that like in personal readings a lot where, you know, discussions take place like I meet someone or I reconnect with someone and it can just be like a simple, you know, like, hey, hello, how are you? You were on my mind, thought I'd give you a call or someone does that to you, you know, reaches out and be like, you know, I've just been thinking about you. I don't know why. I just want to know how you are. And then you end up in conversation and you find that the two of you have been through very similar type energies, experiences. You know, maybe both have dealt with, you know, I feel like the Seven of Swords is like a narcissistic type energy. And it is a bummer that, you know, it affected your heart. And it did affect your heart because the Three Swords is here. And it could say that you've given someone multiple chances. Maybe I just hoped and prayed that someone would change. Someone would see their ways. But maybe the true lesson here was you seeing your own power. About you freeing yourself. About you unlocking the next door. And even if I have a little fear... I'm going to do it anyway. The sun feels like it it's your protector. You know, and then your major arcana right below it. 
and your major arcana right here also, right next to the page of wands, but also the three of swords. Yet the three of pentacles and the six of cups are mirroring each other. So I feel like whoever these people are, and one is you, I feel like this is someone who just appreciates you for exactly who you are. It's almost like an old friend. Like an old friend. How you been, my friend? Well, not so well. Why? Tell me about it. And then you do. And then they listen. I feel like someone listens and they don't even interrupt you. Like they listen to you. All right, let's bring out the, ma or the major ones. Let's bring out the Gilded Chirrut. And let's just go ahead and go deeper. Let's give them a cut and introduce them into the reading. And we are going to start at the beginning, but we are reading it as a whole. You know, I wish I could say that who's ever in this Seven of Swords energy is going to change. Because I feel like for some of you, you really want that to happen. But I feel like I wouldn't be truthful and honest with you or even help you if I was to say, oh, yeah, they may change. Because I don't feel who's ever in the Seven of Swords does change. I feel like that type of energy, they're more than comfortable living in their lower vibration. They're more than comfortable taking what doesn't belong to them. For some of you, it's your heart. It's like they're taking advantage of the empathetic part of yourself. You know, and that's when the Empress comes into play. And I hope we get the Empress because, and you know, I feel like when I start to talk about a card, chances are we're going to get it. Um, but the Empress is someone who, you know, and let's not forget we had that Nine of Wands. And that that's the ability to really reflect back and be really honest with yourself. You know, if someone's had you like in this, this, uh, I don't know, heartache. And there doesn't seem to be any change on the horizon. But yet here's this new door being presented to you. And on the other side of that door lies the Ace of Cups. You know, the Ace of Cups is unconditional love. And you may have given someone that unconditional love. But they don't appreciate it. And they may never appreciate it. So what's the best thing I can do? Cut those ties. You know, I feel like I feel like when that sword of justice is used, when those scales are unbalanced, the minute I cut those ties, the scales are rebalanced. What's fair and just in your world? You know, justice is about making you whole again. All right. It's also interesting how I opened this reading talk about, talking about a lot of people going through some very difficult energy lately. Um, and I feel like you're also one of them. Yet at the same time, there is new opportunity being offered or will be very shortly. You know, maybe it's you freeing yourself from this self-created prison. Maybe that's what opens the door to everything new. Even if it's something old again. And when I say old again, I do not mean this person of the Seven of Swords. Because I feel like chances are, if it's talking about someone you love, you probably have given them many opportunities. All right. Well, hello, Knight of Swords. So, communication. Interesting, because it's over the sun, 
And it's mirroring the Six of Cups. Hmm. And then we have the Page of Swords. Interesting, we, go, we have the Page and the Knight. So let's talk about this for a second. So the Knight of Swords talks about communication. Some type of communications that's coming your way. You know, and I feel like because it's coming over the sun, it's truth. Like what's ever being spoken in that energy, it's real. It's truthful. Um, it's It has integrity. And then you have the Page of Swords. And I feel like for some of you, this is, you know, this lesson that you may have been through may have been about you finding your own voice, your own truth. A page can represent what's also like in the atmosphere that is yet to reach you. May also talk about who's ever in that Six of Cups energy. And, you know, let's just say you know who I'm talking about. And you can talk, you know, maybe through social media, like you can reach out. I wouldn't always wait for someone to reach out to me. If there's someone like on my mind, you know, I can start the conversation. But it may be the other way around, too. You know, it's almost like your phone might ring. And it's like your heart, your heart chakra is reactivated. And now you're in like this decision mode. Do I let this move forward? Or do I allow that past heartache to really stop me? I feel like the Page of Swords is also about, you know, learning your truth, regaining your voice. You may be saying to someone, enough is enough. I've had enough. And that alone could be a sign to the universe that, oh, she's ready. She's ready for what's next. He's ready for what's next. And we already know what lies on the other side of that door. Again, that Ace of Cups. Look at this, the Ace of Wands. So, I love that it's coming over the Queen of Wands, who I do feel is you. This is inspired action. You know, how I said the page is sometimes what's in the atmosphere. That's kind of what the Ace of Wands is also. It's energy that you can feel. You may not know why you're feeling it. Some of you, this is about epiphanies and ideas that you're going to receive. And then making the decision, do I put them into action? A little like gnat flying around me. Ace of Wands. Yeah. Taking action. But it's definitely inspired. Hmm. Eight of Pentacles. You know, I just get this feeling some of you are starting on this new path. Like these ideas, epiphanies, um, you know, just how I was saying, like how my spirituality opened up. Um, this reminds me of that, right? Like this person sitting down at the desk. Um, Eight of Pentacles is... You know, it's the willingness to go into something as the apprentice. But knowing, especially with the Ace of Wands, like being the supporting energy here, that you will become the master teacher here. This is also the energy of, like, I don't need to know everything to get started on something. I just need to trust these ideas and then put them into action. Again, I feel like your interest will be piqued. And then will you follow it? It is an eight, so it is a new beginning. You know, and the Eight of Pentacles also answers the question, you know, can I be successful? And it tells you as long as you put your focus on it, you will have success. Now, 
it doesn't mean all your focus has to be on work or creativity, right? You want that, you know, equal, equal fun, equal with equal work. Some of you, you're using that compassionate side of yourselves to do something in the world now. Look at this, the Eight of Wands. Two Eights following each other. Now two Eights also mirroring each other. You know, this is fast-moving energy, no doubt. But it's also what I think about, I bring about. You know, it's like the law of attraction. I often picture like four of those wands going out to the universe and then four coming back. It's like the universe must meet me right where I'm at. Well, if I keep my head down in this five of pentacles, if I don't turn around and notice that the key to unlock this door, it's right there. And that can be an energetic sign. It's right there. Will I unlock that door? And I feel like the minute you do, it feels like everything changes. It feels like the change is quick. And that may be, again, why the Seven of Cups is here. Like something happening quickly. And it can feel confusing, right? Or even a little chaotic, like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? Now, it is mirroring that Eight of Swords at this moment. You have three eights. So, it just feels like this is a time for new beginnings in your life. But listen, everything that feels like it's coming into your life now or you're creating... It feels like it's part of your destiny anyway. Hello, lovers. Right over the Ace of Cups. You know, the interesting, when you look at this image, here's the feminine, right? And we can see her. She's like present. She's in current energy. And here's the masculine. It's like we can't quite see him yet, but yet he is there. And that reminds me of the Ace of Wands. I can feel it. And for some of you, it can certainly talk about, let's come back to that Six of Cups. Let's come back to maybe potential communication coming your way. And it could be long distance. Doesn't have to be. But it could talk about like, you know, it starts with communication before we ever come together in person. But it is right over that Ace of Cups. This is the card of Gemini. The meaning of the card is a head over heart decision. And I'm sure that is part of it. But you can just feel the chemistry, right? She can feel it. It's like he's whispering in her ear. She's feeling it. Right over that Ace of Cups. You know what's interesting is in a lot of readings, like I'm learning so much from just doing Tarot. And, you know, uh, what I've learned is we do give our power away. We give our time away. Right? We wait and wish and hope that someone will change, that someone will love us the way we deserve. But they don't. And then we think, oh man. There is no such thing as love. Love can never be good. But that's not true. That's what we tell ourselves. But that's not the truth. Again, you just need to look back in your own life to understand that. You know, think back again to relationships. You know, like I say this a lot, but like, you know. Um, when I got married, I was 19. And so, like, now I think back and I'm like, oh, my God. Thank God I'm not in that energy anymore, right? But I remember when we broke up. And it was just heartbreaking. You know, I mean, he cheated on me all the time. And it was heartbreaking, 
But then it ended. And I, I remember saying, I'm not going to get involved with someone again. Then I moved back home. And then I met someone. Then I met someone. Wow. Two of Cups. Soulmate. Now, this is coming over the Seven of Swords. Again, that energy of deception and envy. But listen, I want to just say, you know, soulmates come in all forms. And sometimes, yes, a soulmate can come in like a very difficult type of energy. But they may be trying to teach us something spiritually. You know, a lot of times our human mind doesn't get it. Until our spirituality really opens up. And I am not saying the Seven of Swords is like a soulmate energy for, for everyone. Because for some of you, I feel like it may be more of like, um, like a free will type of energy. Because again, I feel like that crow is like, like I tried to give you the red flags, you know. And that reminds me again of my ex. And everyone around me was like, don't get involved with him, Sandy. Don't get involved with him. And the more they told me that, the more I wanted him. Wow. It did not take long for his true self to come out. And he was like a serial cheater. You know, and now, so many years later, I'm living with the love of my life. So many years later. You just never know what life is going to bring you. You just need to be open. You know, even when I wasn't open, right? Even when I finally left. I mean, you know, first I was with my then husband, broke up with him. Then I ended up with someone who abused me. You know, I was too young to know and to understand all this. And each one I thought I loved deeply. But each one, thank God, I'm no longer with. And that's what that's the point I'm trying to get across. You know, and then Sam and I, many of you hear me talk about Sam often. You know, we were teenage lovers. Um, I'm saying lovers. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but we were love. Um, well, there's a whole story around that. Um, but we broke up. And... It wasn't until like 40 years later where he reached out to me. I was living in a completely different state. I was in Rhode Island. He was in Pennsylvania. He reached out to me. We spent years talking on the phone, like like getting to know each other again to the point where now we live together. Did I expect any of that? No. Did it take me a moment to... Like, let all that fear go? Yes. But I stayed with it at the same time. I mean, you have the Ace of Cups. First of all, you have this door that has a key that unlocks it. And it opens up this Ace of Cups. And then the lover shows up over it. And then the soulmates over that. You know, some of you, this could certainly talk about a twin flame. But yeah, I want to say, like, if you're dealing with a twin flame who is deceptive, don't try to change them. Don't waste your time. You know, I feel like you're better off, like, thinking about your own vibration, thinking about your own life, raising your own vibration. And then... I feel like when you have, and I say raise your vibration, but don't shoot for perfection. Because we'll never reach it. We're born imperfect. But I feel like you do learn what I no longer want. And the type of energy I no longer want. And that's an important lesson. It's a hard lesson. But listen, it's definitely worth learning. All right, well, let's keep going. You know, 
being a Virgo, I really don't like, I'm I like, I'm one of those people, I'm very private, but yet not with you guys. Like with you guys, I'm, I'm completely open. Um, and, and I find that, well, I don't find it strange, but other people, you know, would say that it's weird that like you can be completely open with people you don't even know, but I feel like I know you, I know you guys like soul to soul. We have the four of pentacles coming over the eight of swords. Interesting. I keep getting this energy about home. Excuse me. Four of pentacles. Some of you, you may be starting something like with like in your home, like a business in your home. Hmm. You know, the one thing with the Four of Pentacles you want to be leery of is sometimes I can hold on to my ideas too tightly. You know, the way I want things to work out. And not be opening, not be, not being open to like, let's just say these epiphanies that are coming in, these, these new ideas. Again, maybe I may say, well, I don't think I know enough. I just merely need to just start moving forward in it. And I feel like the rest will open itself up to you. But boy, do I love this energy if you decide. And I love, you know, it's also so creative. Like there's so much creativity right in this line. You know, where I say that in the Four of Pentacles, the one risk, because it is coming over the Eight of Swords, is, you know, I may say, well, I want things my, like, I want it to be the way that I want it to be. But maybe it just can't be that way. Maybe it's not meant to be that way. You know, especially with the wheel and the sun mirroring the wheel. Maybe you just have no idea how good things can be. Because you're stuck in what is not good, what is not turning out your way. So it's more about going with the flow. King of Swords. Interesting because we have the Knight of Swords now mirroring the King of Swords. So let me talk about this King of Swords. First of all, yes, it can be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We have Gemini and Libra on the board. But to me, this King is someone, and it is a King. And we do have the Page, right? The Page, the Winter, the Night that's now in the King's energy. So right there is someone who's evolved, evolution. So to me, this king is someone of integrity. Someone who does speak the truth. Especially if I've been dealing with someone who does lie a lot. This is someone who is a good communicator. Especially after I've been dealing with someone who is a terrible communicator. It is coming over to Six of Cups, so some of you already know who this person is. But it does not have to represent an air sign. I want you to understand that. And I say that because I don't want you to be like, you know, let's say an earth sign comes, comes towards you. And they have the most beautiful hearts, but you're like, well, but Sandy said, you know, nope, it was going to be a, an air sign. No, Sandy did not say that. <laughs> Sandy says, look at the energy. You know, learn to read people. I feel like, you know, you give someone enough time, they're going to reveal to you who they are. And because it's coming over the Six of Cups, I feel like even though this king, um, you know, a great communicator, um, integrity, all that, but also for some of you, Project memories, you know, and it doesn't even have to mean we were in a relationship before. 
could be an old friend that turns into a lover. But listen, you may not even know that going in. We could doubt the Eight of Swords over the Three of Swords. That makes me a little worried. And I'll tell you why. Because, you know, first of all, the Ace of Cups is right above this. And the Lovers is right above it. And the Seven of Cups, which tells me that this Ace of Cups is coming in. That it's coming in. And it may be already in the atmosphere. But now I worry that you may not accept it. But then at the same time, I want to say, I feel like because it's the King of Swords, I feel like if I just tell them my truth, like why I'm afraid to fall in love again, I feel like they'll get it, they'll understand it, and they'll help me put these walls down. You know, I do say that this is self-created and you're the only one who can uncreate it. But I definitely feel like someone can help you. You know, and it may just be like someone validating what you're feeling. As it relates to love, you know, it's like saying to someone, listen, I've had my heart broken. Like really broken. And maybe three times because it's coming over the three of swords. I don't know. If I can give myself again, I feel like they would say, I understand that. And we don't need to rush. Let's just talk. Let's just talk. Don't forget this, this self-created prison, it's an eight. An eight stands for a new beginning. And I feel like all this is meant to happen. And I feel like, you know, when will it happen? Well, I feel like in divine timing. Because I feel like the first thing I got to do is unlock this door. And then I feel like the rest just follows. Doesn't mean that all my fear just goes away. I can see that it doesn't. But it doesn't mean I can't move past that. Because I see that you can I also feel the need to believe in yourself as, as it relates to creating something in your life. You know, whether it be like, you know, like I decide to take a new job because I'm unhappy where I'm at. You know, this, uh, this Eight of Pentacles is coming over the Six of Pentacles. So, again, that can be the energy. Well, it's really about learning that fine art of give and take. And if I give and give and give, it's because I'm just a compassionate soul. But do I give my energy to the wrong people? And then judge myself according to their standards. I could see someone in the Seven of Swords saying... You know, and I've had it happen to me where, you know, someone who just doesn't know how to love you right tells you like these stupid lies that no one's ever going to love you. Um, you know, like if you're a single mom, which I was with kids, no one's ever going to accept you, you know, as a package deal. And I would say, well, that's the only way I come as a package deal. But then they do. Then that person comes along. And they accept you. You know, baggage and all. And listen, they may have their own baggage. And it may, you know, this feels like this could be the energy where maybe two people are helping heal each other from past experiences. But I feel like you both sit on each other's wheel. Like you're both destined to be. And this may just be the right time. You know, I feel like divine, a lot of times, like divine timing. Yes, we're waiting on divine many times. Like when is the time? When is it my time? 
But I feel like divine would say, it's when you pick up that key and unlock that door. It's when you uncreate this prison the best that you can. It's when you realize that you're giving your energy and your power away. You know, sometimes I don't like to give people titles like, you know, and I know I already did in this reading, like soulmates, twin flames. Let's just say love is love. And there's different vibrations of love because there's different vibrations of people. Cancer, what a reading. Look at this, King Cups. So even though we have two different kings here, I kind of feel that they're the same person. Um, so, you know, this can be Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. We do have um, your major arcana on the table. We do have, I feel like we have the death card, but we don't. But yet, I feel like the death card is what we need, right? That ending, like letting things end so that there can be a rebirth. You know, I feel like, listen, I feel like certain things will still reach you, even if you haven't closed doors. But to truly, truly appreciate it, closing that door first, you know, allowing, because I feel like the more you allow yourself to have a rebirth, the more you allow yourself to appreciate who you are, no matter what anybody else has told you, I feel like that naturally lifts your vibration. And just by the law of attraction, that tells you that whoever is coming towards you would be of that vibration. And if they are in a lower vibration, then naturally, it's like the universe wants them to fade away. It's our human nature, though, to pull them back in. But the sun, you know, the sun is your illuminator. So anyways, my point is, this is someone I feel really loves love. You know, really loves having that special person that if something happens during my day, you're the first person I call. I mean, right over your major arcana. Some of you, it can be you. And it may just signify that you love being in love. But I feel like part of the lesson here is I got to know who I'm giving my love to. And do they deserve it? You know what I mean? And if they are like in this low vibration, and I have to keep lowering my vibration to be with them. I've got to be truthful with myself. I've got to let them fade away. This king is also mirroring the ace of cups, but also on the wheel. Look at this. We have the wheel again. Now the wheel is right over the page of wands. My risk taker. My, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance. Understanding that I can always change courses. Maybe I'm just going to allow some, I'm going to give someone the chance to reveal to me who they truly are. And then I'll make a decision. But it's definitely showing you that this is part of your destiny. Look at this, the Ten of Swords. So some of you have been in a repeat pattern with someone, no doubt. Or you just been allowing, you know, anyone and everyone to put these swords in your back. I feel like the Ten of Swords is a submissive type of energy. It's almost like where I've given up. But that wheel is spinning again. You know, this is the, this is an energy I do want to come to an end. And maybe the lesson here is to understand that I have been in this repeat pattern with someone. 
And if I expect them to change, this would tell you it's not going to happen. Now, for some of you, this, this, you're already through this energy. And you're on your way to the next energy. It's like you're just about to pick up that key and unlock that door. Which ends this energy. You know, and let's also realize with justice here, this could have been a karmic lesson. And that's why the soulmates could be out over the seven of swords. Karmic lesson means your soul wanted to learn this. Because once you learn it, once you evolve from it, you don't repeat it. You have learned that energy. You have learned, like if, let's say you got stuck with a narcissist. Like, once you leave that energy, and I feel like there's not much else you can do but leave it. And another one comes towards you, or even that one. But your vibration now, you know, you're believing in yourself again. You're kind of believing in love again. You're definitely allowing your creativity to flow. Now, you're a different person. And if they come towards you now, I feel like you would be saying, my friend, I am not the same person I used to be. You can no longer take advantage of me. It is not going to happen. And then I love that the three of wands follows that. This is optimism. This is optimism about your future. This is about living in the present moment and not projecting yourself out too far in the future. But just knowing that, you know, if I live from a state of optimism, if I can find the little things to be grateful for, more things will come into your life that you will be grateful for. This is saying to the universe, I know that my ships will come in and I know they're going to come in divine timing. I'm going to play my part. Because if we go back to that Eight of Wands, what I think about, I bring about. And if I'm putting optimism out into the universe, it's like, you know, a card that mother, well, I think it's called optimism, where it literally says, I expect good things to happen, and they do. In the Ten of Swords, I expect bad things to happen, and they do. But listen, I really feel like all of this has been about your souls, like different lessons that your soul came into this earth time to learn. You know, remember that earth is a classroom and that we're spiritual beings having human experiences. Remember, our soul wants to have adventure and adventure to the soul doesn't just mean like, you know, lovey-dovey love. It can mean like hard lessons. But when I learn them, I've learned them for eternity. I expect good things to happen. And they do. And if they don't, I don't accept it. Three is also the energy of joy. And, you know... It's hard to say joy with, with some of these difficult energies, but it's about reaching that status. You know, I feel like this is talking about really great love after horrible love. And then I feel like it's also talking about ideas and epiphanies that come to you that you can really put to use. You know, I remember when I started um, doing tarot readings, I first started on Facebook and I grew very quickly. And then Facebook, this was a long time ago. And then Facebook decided that you could no longer put readings out the way I put readings like this out. Maybe not quite as long, um, but they shut me down. And I thought, oh, my God, I, I was starting to make a living from it. I thought this is my path. But because Facebook shut me down 
That's what made me move to YouTube. And now, I, I mean, you know, I have almost 2,000, 200,000 subscribers. I'm not counting the number. But what I'm saying is I feel like my work is reaching so many more than it ever did on Facebook. So that door closed, but then another door opened. I didn't know if it was going to be good. I didn't know if I'd be successful. I just took the chance. And now this is what I do. You know, and I do do personal readings at my house and I do them online also. Um, but really, YouTube is where I put a lot of my focus. And it's because I feel like I can reach so many. And it's not me. It's not me. Because, you know, my life isn't perfect. I feel like it's, it's our spiritual guides who I just allow myself to be a vessel for. You know, but I do feel like my experiences come up often and it's because I've been there and it is because I've overcome a lot of them. Again, my life isn't perfect. But my God, is it different than it used to be? And when I say when one door closes, another door will open, I really mean that. And I know that, you know, it's one of those things that you know that you know, and you don't even know how you know it, but you know it. I mean, I know it from my experiences. I know it from many of your experiences. This is why I like to go live sometimes, too, because um, I feel like when we go live, a lot of you can see, you know, when I go live, I just do open questions. And I do like mini readings for everyone. Um, I feel like a lot of you can see that you're going through similar experiences. You know, we're all more alike than we are different. And, you know, not to keep talking about myself, but did I ever think that the person that I probably love more than anyone romantically, who was Sam, who had always been in my heart and on my mind, you know, not obsessively. Like I was happy in other relationships, but I never felt that true fulfillment that I feel with him. I never felt that true acceptance that I feel with him. And all of it was so unexpected. And I do have to say that it came on, it came on a day that really was one of my lowest points. And then my phone rang. And then my life changed. The fear didn't go right away. But we worked through it. And now we live together. It wasn't overnight. It was a process but I allowed myself to experience the process. And now I'm so glad that I did. And I'm only telling you that because I really want you to understand that when a door closes, even if I didn't ask for that door to close, a new door will open. And this new door that's opening up in this reading is the Ace of Cups. And then it just so happens to get the lovers over it. I mean, how divine is that? Hmm. I'm just trying to think, is there anything I want to go back and clarify? And by the way, when I go back to clarify, I'm doing it for you. Like, to me, it feels so clear. Like, it really does. And, you know, this is not an overnight type of thing. But, but as I say that, you know, I'm reminded that this door is ready to be closed. And as soon as I close that door, the Ace of Cups is there. And this page can represent like what's in the atmosphere. I just don't know it yet. 
you know what I want to do? I'm just going to go across the middle and just see if anything else wants to come out because I really feel like there's no particular energy that I want to clarify. So let's just leave it open to anything else that may want to come out. And then I think I am going to do another Mother Mary card. I feel like this reading calls for it. We have the Four of Cups. Well, first of all, the Four of Cups, the meaning of the card is discontentment, boredom in one's life. But the message is about using one's spiritual discernment. It's a gift. This person, they're receiving a cup. <clears throat> Here it is. It's like it's coming down from the hand of God. This person is looking right at it. A lot of times in the Four of Cups, they're not seeing it. Which tells me that some may use their spiritual discernment, some may not. Or some may, did I say that right? Some may not, some may. But nonetheless, it still comes. It's just a signal that's saying that I'm not real happy anyway. What am I hanging on to? And then the nine of wands. You know, I feel like reflection. You know, maybe every nine years, maybe every five years, maybe every day. What's working? What's not working? What's holding me back? Have I grown from it? Am I proud of myself? Because I have grown from it. You know, I call the person in the Nine of Wands my spirit warrior. First enough because they're bold enough to look back. Looking back without judgment. And you're truly learning how much you have grown. Which tells you that you probably are more ready than you think you are. My little spirit warrior. Look at this. The six of wands. That's the energy of victory and success. Quite beautiful. You know, it's like claiming victory over your life. But this is also the energy of other people looking up to you. You know, for those who like, let's say you have a home business or any type of like new adventure that you're on, um, I do kind of feel like your spirituality is a big part of it. It doesn't have to mean I have a spiritual business, but you're using your spirituality. This is the energy where other people are like, I feel like are literally asking you, like, how did you overcome it? This is about the action steps that you've taken and how you arrived at this victory and success. You know, it's kind of like when I tell you my story. And, you know, some of you may question, maybe there is something you want to do and you question, is anybody going to care? The answer is yes. You know, your reflection is what brings in this victory and success. Your understanding of these past lessons and how you've overcome is what brings you this victory and success. Your chances that you take, right? Even if you don't know where they're leading, but you have this hunch. And then you follow it. And the next thing you know, you're in a whole different world. I know this energy. And I feel like I want to leave it there at victory and success. But I do want to take Mother Mary over this reading. You know, I feel like, how do I say this? Because, you know, I know some people like, you know, they want short little readings. But I don't know how. I mean, I'm sure some people can do it. But I feel like, you know, real life, 
is can be hard. And I feel like these readings are like a roadmap, like your way out, like giving you different ideas. I feel like it's opening different parts of yourself up. And I don't know how someone can do that in 10 minutes. And be truly honest that, you know, if, if you really want to help someone change their life, how do you do that in 10 minutes? How do you deal with all this, which is real life? Again, I'm not putting other readers down. I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like it can't be done. I know others would argue with me. That, uh, well, I do it on my own channel. And that's exactly what I do. But, you know, sometimes we just want to see the good cards and not the lessons. <laughs> but without understanding the lessons, then, like, the blessings, I don't know. Like, can they truly reach us? Will we even understand them? I'm not sure why I brought all that up right now. Okay. Hmm. Sobriety. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. So, you know, sobriety can talk about like, you know, using something to help you overcome when really it is your mind, your clear mind. You know, I feel like what it really means is it is a clear mind that can easily pick up the signs. You know, when I'm in like the Eight of Swords type of energy, do I pick up the signs clearly? I feel like signs still come. You know, your spiritual team is still just as involved. But, they can't uncreate that prison for you. So, clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. Look at this. Signs. Signs, signs, everywhere is sign. I watch for, notice, and trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. Sign, sign, everywhere is sign. The signs don't stop. And, you know, if you're unsure, like, if something was your sign, ask your team to send it again. Ask them to make it so it's undeniable. They will. And sometimes that can mean uncomfortable energy. But learn to trust that. That it may just be moving you into unbelievable places. Unbelievable relationships. You know, you were assigned, uh, we all were, a spiritual team before you ever made it to this earth. And that includes your spirit guides, your angels, your archangels, God, Jesus, all of that. You know, your angels need your permission. But your spirit guides are always sending you signs. And I feel like different spirit guides... How do I want to say this? Like, I feel like... Um, I feel like different spirit guides, like, specialize in different things. Like, I feel like one spirit guide may help me, like, within my creative house. Another spirit guide... Helps me within love. Some of these spirit guides are people you know. People you've loved in this lifetime. Some of them you haven't even met. But they can be ancestors. Listen, they love you. Unconditionally. And there's no doubt about that. And there's nothing you can do that would stop that. Nothing you can do. Take the place of my guy. Sign, sign, everywhere sign. I watch for, notice, and trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. You know, another way of saying that is I don't need to create these prisons. 
my energy, my intuition, which is where my guides reach me. It is my GPS in this lifetime. And when I learn to trust that above all, even above mine, trust your own intuition. Things become so much clearer. You know, when we stop saying like, you know, man, I've had it rough. A lot of us have had it rough. But then we come out the other side. And then we were able to look back and be like, wow, thank God that ended. <laughs> I feel like that's what your spiritual team is about. You know, as you evolve, so do the things, so do the blessings in your life. You know, you have the wheel twice, destiny. You have the ace of cups, you have the lovers, you have the two of cups. Um, you have the sun You have victory and success. You have inspired action. You have all this energy to help you evolve from any type of difficult situations. I feel like there's always an answer. But those answers sometimes can be difficult. You know, again, it reminds me of like when Facebook shut me down. I was like, holy shit. Now what am I going to do? But then something was like, go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. And I had to start at the beginning, right? No subscribers. I just had to trust what I put out that people would eventually find. And now I have this big, beautiful soul family. And it's because I followed the signs. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. What a reading. What a reading. Um, I think I say that all the time, but every reading to me is like a new movie. It's like a new story um, that develops right in front of my eyes. And that's why I love what I do. Sometimes I feel like I don't even want to call it Tarot because I feel like Tarot's got like a bad name attached to it. This is more about your spirituality, who you are as a soul, you know, um, this is about true life, but how we can really live these dreams. And many of them are just unexpected. But the more we just open ourselves up, the more we receive. I love you guys. Truly, I love you. And my prayer for you is that these blessings and these signs be so clear to you that you cannot deny them. And they lead you right on the path of your beautiful tomorrow. That's my prayer for you. I love you guys. I will. And by the way, I feel like for those who have evolved, who have opened up this new door, that's what the comment section to me is all about. Like sharing your experience. And you certainly don't have to. But I feel like your words, like, I truly feel like you just don't understand, like, who you're helping. But you are helping. You are helping. So, thank you for sharing, you know. Thank you for sharing, period. I love you guys. I thank you. And I'll see you next time at, at our table. Bye-bye.